All right, so uh, let me call the uh, general membership meeting of the MAP to order. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining today's general membership meeting of the Management Association of the Philippines, featuring a panel discussion on addressing the climate crisis. I am happy to be hosting and moderating uh, this uh, event. Please settle down comfortably. We will now begin our program. May I request everyone to pause and bow our heads for a short prayer to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God. Our most merciful God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, and thou caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill, protect those who are most at risk, give comfort to those who have lost a loved one, welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion, remove all fear from our hearts, fill us with confidence in your care. We also pray for the eternal repose of MAP member, former Congresswoman Maria Amelita Gurley Kalimbas Villarosa, president of Top Management Programs Corporation, who passed away on May 30, 2021 at the age of 78. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Thank you. May I now request the president of MAP, who is also the chair of Far Eastern University or FEU, Mr. Gigi Montinola, to deliver his welcome remarks. Our panelists, Deputy Speaker and former Senator Lauren Legarda, Mayor Andres Dangueros, and MAP member Iliak Diaz, our distinguished guests from the government, diplomatic circle, academia, and media our Board of Governors, fellow MEP members, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Quote, the Great Reset, leading for the common good, unquote, continues to be a very relevant theme for the Management Association of the Philippines in line with the ongoing quest of the country uh, for herd immunity and economic reopening. In pursuing MAP's mission of promoting management excellence for nation building, your board has been focusing this year on the following three priority programs. Number one, safely reopening the economy. Number two, promoting shared prosperity and ESG, environment, social, and government. And this is particularly relevant today. And number three, enhancing member benefits from best practice sharing. Specifically, we've been implementing a five-point platform that covers the following crisis highlighted in our inaugural meeting last January. A health crisis, an economic crisis, a climate crisis, a learning crisis, and a social justice crisis. Today's general membership meeting fitly during the month of June, which is the environmental month for the Philippines, addresses the climate crisis and the letter E in the environment part of ESG. 
it is timely for the world it is the critical decade if we do not do something this decade it may be too late to reverse climate change fortunately the us is back into the paris climate accord Europe has been the leader of pro climate government intervention towards zero carbon by 2050 and China aims to show the world that it is an environmental champion. The Philippines wishes to do its share and there is increasing press about the country, the banks and certain individual companies beginning uh, to work towards supporting green initiatives and green companies. The environment is the most popular topic among the young and we in the Management Association of the Philippines have positioned ESG, Environmental, Social and Governance, as our second most important program goal. We are therefore privileged to have as our main speakers today, Deputy Speaker and, uh, and a former Senator who has been a long time Philippine and international environmental champion and two representatives with Walk the Talk mini success stories, a mayor in an island community and a young en entrepreneur in the solar energy space. We hope that their panel presentations will enlighten you and inspire you members to take more affirmative action in this climate, climate crisis decade. As further contribution to this uh, initiative, MAP has supported the Green EDSA movement, which aims to increase the green canopy over Metro Manila and as a starting point, the green makeover of EDSA into a tree-lined landscape corridor with walkable sidewalks and bike lanes. We have a number of initiatives also in other areas. On July 13, we will have a panel discussion on governance warriors, how independence, independent directors create value. And this will address the letter G in the governance part of ESG. Panelists will include attorney Nanette Lavares, independent director of Metro Bank and Pro Life UK, Mr. Fred Pasquale, lead independent director of SM Investments Corporation and a governor of the MAP. Ms. Ms. Flor Tariela, former board chairperson of PMB, and Dr. Roman Zaila, corporate governance lead of the International Finance Corporation. Other forthcoming MAP events include a June 16 MAP Arts and Culture Lecture uh, with a virtual tour of the National Museum, a June 9 St. Luke's Conversation Webinar on the future of the hospital, and the, and the June 16 Business World webinar on Bayanihan, Rising Together Through Housing. For in, your information, the third leg of our program is our you know, sharing of member benefits. And so far year to date, in only the first six months, we already have had 54 webinars on a variety of topics. Uh, so for those who are interested, you can pick and choose but definitely uh, in this era of non-face-to-face -face, uh, um, meetings, uh, the webinar has uh, supplanted it. And, and I'm sure you've had your share of Zoom or over Zoomed events. Uh, in closing, we ask you to um, note that the MAP has also contributed a million pesos to election 2022 uh, coalition for its voter registration program that aims to convince 7 million young and deactivated voters to register by September 30, 2021. Uh, we will also uh, be involved in co-signing manifestos uh, uh, and unity statements on effectively uh, proposing uh, you know, voter registration and voter education for the all-important uh, elections uh, next year. Um, please check your emails and Viber inboxes, our electronic newsletter, the MAP memo, and the MAP Facebook page, and our LinkedIn account 
for regular updates on MAP programs and activities. We, we've done our best to keep things lively and, and informed. And so we hope and, and that you will continue to support and we thank you uh, for attending uh, whatever, attend, whatever events you've already attended uh, in, in the MAP. So good luck today. Uh, very timely and interesting topic uh, on the environment. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Rock. Thank you, Gigi. So wonderful to hear that there are uh, so many things that we are doing and the MAP being productive uh, even during this time. So moving on for the presentation of new MAP members for online induction, I would like to call on the chair of the MAP membership committee, who is the senior legal counsel of ACRA Law, attorney Francis Lim. Attorney. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, Deputy Speaker Lauren Negarda, Mayor Andres Nageros, Mr. Ilak Diaz, fellow MAP members, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to announce that this afternoon, we're inducting 10 new MAP members who will increase our total membership from 1,059 to 1,069. May I now read the names of our inductees. Mr. Number one, Mr. Said Muhammad Ahmad Ali Ahmad, General Manager for the Philippines of Etihad Airways, Line of Business Commercial Airline Operation. Sponsors, uh, Ms. Re Rebecca Garcia and yours truly. Number two, Mr. Jose Marie Banson, President of SM Development Corporation, Line of Business, Residential Property Development. Sponsors, Arisa Mantarin and yours truly. Next, please. Mr. Ramon Kayabiab, uh, CEO, Ciclab Inc., Line of Business, Digital Creative Services. Sponsors are Mr. J.J. Manuel Soriano and Mr. Mon Fernandez. Next, please. Mr. Lawrence Larry Cheng, Managing Director, Majestic, Majestic Freaks, uh, Press, Inc., and Majestic Packaging Products Corporation, Line of Business, Manufacturing Paper, and Paper Based. Uh, products. Sponsor, uh, sponsors are Mr. Ramon B. Segusmundo and Ms. Risa Mantaring. Next, please. Um, Mr. Gabani Jan Preda, General Manager, JT International Philippines, Inc., Line of Business, Manufacturing, Distribution, Marketing, and Wholesale of Tobacco Products. Sponsors are yours truly and Ms. Risa Mantaring. Next, please. Mr. Kishore Kumar, Kishore Natu Malhemlani, President and CEO, Multi-Spear Trading Inc., Line of Business, Development, Operation and Leasing of Commercial Properties, Sponsors, Arisa and myself. Okay, number nine, um, um, Mr. Albert Beach uh, Loxin, Head of uh, Enterprise Revenue Group, PLDT, Line of Business, Telecommunications, Sponsors, um, Al Palillo, and Mr. Juan Victor Hernandez. Next, please. Mr. Manuel Dimi R. Lozano. Dimi, thank you for joining us. SVP, CFO, and Chief Information Officer. Boitis Equity Ventures, Inc., line of business, holding company, engaged in power, banking, and financial services, food, land, construction, shipbuilding, and infrastructure. Sponsors are yours truly and Ms. Risa Mantaring. Next, please. And Mr. Last but not the least, Mr. Albert Torres Perez, Regional Director and Country Head, Michael Page International Recruitment, Philippines Inc., Line of Business, Private uh, Employment and Recruitment, Sponsors, yours truly, and Ms. Risa Bantarin. At this point, uh, may I request our President, Mr. Gigi Montinola, to lead the online induction of our new members. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. Mitch Luxin. Mel Lozano. Yeah. Perez. Jose Marie Banson. Ray Monte Abiyab. Okay. Do you solemnly pledge? Do hereby solemnly pledge? Hereby solemnly pledge. Solemnly pledge. Uh, that I will perform well and faithfully yeah. to the best of my ability. 
by duty as a regular, regular member, regular member yeah. in order to no, contribute to the achievement of the objectives of the, objective of the management and creation of the management. So we got Congratulations and welcome to the MAP. It's only my job. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you, much. Francis. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Francis, and thank you, Gigi. You you wanted to say something, Gigi? No, I just wanted to say that you know we know that you have a choice of uh, which uh, business association to, to attend to join, and we certainly appreciate that you've picked the Management uh, Association of the Philippines. In our unbiased uh, opinion, of course, we think we're the best business association. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we're able to do shows it. So, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you, Gigi, and thank you, Francis. Uh, congratulations you. to our new members. For our uh, members, please welcome uh, these new members and uh, make them feel welcome. Really. Thank you. Okay. Thank so. You. Thank um, you. All right, so congratulations. So some reminders before we start the presentation of our panelists. Uh, first, as a participant for this uh, general membership meeting, you are automatically muted and your camera video is also switched off. You may submit your questions through the Q&A, um, the, the Q&A box that you see on your screen. With the assistance of our MAP Secretariat, I will read the questions on your behalf. For your information, you will only be able to see the panelists, but you will not be able to view the other participants. Lastly, at any point during this uh, GMM, in case you lose connection, please join again by repeating what you did earlier in logging in. So now I'm going to introduce the speakers. In line with MAP policy and in the interest of time, we will dispense with the lengthy introduction of our panelists. I would like to remind our panelists that they're given five to 10 minutes for their opening statements. Again, our topic is on addressing climate crisis on global, national, and local level of interest to members of the Management Association of the Philippines. May I call on our first panelist? Please welcome the mayor of the municipality of Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro. My kababayan, my uh, hometown is also in Occidental Mindoro. Mayor Andres Andy Langeros. Mayor, the floor is yours. Uh, Sablayan is the largest municipality in the Philippines, covering more than 2,000 Aside from agriculture, Sablayan is known for the tourist spots. It includes the Bruce Parula Park, the Noro Pines Forest, Mount Eglip Bangkok Natural Park, and the world famous Abu Reef Natural Park. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, I'm so sorry to, to, uh, to cut you. I think we cannot huh? hear you uh, so much. So I, I don't know how we can improve on the microphone. Okay. So sorry about this. Asablayan is the largest okay. municipality in the Philippines, covering more than 2,000 square kilometers of land. Aside from agriculture, Sablayan is known for its tourist spots. It includes the Pasing Parole Park, an island, Dora Pines Forest, Mount Eglit Natural Park, and the world famous Upper Reef Natural Park. All of these tourist spots are part of the natural resource of Sablayan and are not man made. The municipality is committed in protecting not just these tourist spots, but also other important conservation with the proclamation of conservation areas as critical habitat and locally managed marine protected areas. The implementation of conservation methods while balancing the economic benefits that the community is receiving from the areas. These are the forest ecosystem management and development program. Freshwater ecosystem management and development program. Urban Ecosystem Management and Development Program, and Coastal Ecosystem Management and Development Program, Forest Ecosystem Management Development Program. Under this program, it involves the protection, conservation, and management in order to protect the remaining forest of Sablayan through implementation and conservation 
related activities and strict enforcement of environment and natural resources laws, rules and regulations, and local ordinances in collaboration with the DNR. DNR. Among the ongoing and future activities under this program are listed below as follows. Protection and conservation of indoor pine forest. Arroyan Malati critical habitat for the protection and conservation of Tamarau, its habitat and diversity found terrain. Establishment and maintenance of nurseries to help sustain the forest through tree planting activities in Sablayan North and South Municipal Extension. Biodiversity monitoring and assisted natural, natural regeneration activities. Conduct of communication, education, and public awareness, discussing the effect and ways to reduce the impact of climate change. Freshwater ecosystem management and development plan. This program focuses on the protection and conservation of rivers, lakes, and sublayan, with the following activities being implemented. Adoption of native trees, seedlings for river bank protection program that involves the community and the tree planting activities. Protection and conservation of lakes, protecting and conserving lakes, wetlands for the involvement of the communities. Provision of biodiversity friendly livelihood for the concerned proper people organization in combination with the concerned agencies like USD, DTI, the technical and logistic support. Urban ecosystem management and development program. These programs include activities in urban cleaning and ecological solid waste management with protection and maintenance of municipal parks, for example, Eco Park, Cushing Barola Park. Establishment and maintenance of nursery within Eco Park, which supports the need of for native seedlings for the urban greening program with the involvement of the organization of the government and private sectors and tree planting activities. Establishment of category one sanitary landfill as the final disposal of procedural waste. Establishment and operation of uh, waste diversion facilities, samples, reading, misreading machines. Recyclable, biodegradable waste as part of the recycling program. It includes organic composing, composting, and brick making, which uses crushes, plus, and plastic bottles as components. Coastal management, management, and development program. As part of Sablayan, is implementing the program on the ground that coastal and marine ecosystems are very efficient in carbon sequestration. This program includes activities on protection and conservation of coastal and marine sources. Management, protection, and conservation of marine protected area or impasse. Declaration and management of the 10 locally managed MPAs and support the protection and conservation of Ban Naipas declared MPA, Yaburi Natural Park in collaboration with the DINA. Preparation of MPAs management plan. Organizing and strengthening MPA's people organization as partners in the protection and conservation of locally managed MPA's. Vision of biodiversity friendly livelihood for the concerned MPA's and POs. Patrolling and management of municipal waters, including locally managed MPA's. Protection, biodiversity conservation and management of mangrove and coastal resources. Declaration of mangrove forest habitat. as mangrove conservation areas, population of mangrove construction, conservation management plans, maintenance of mangrove nurseries and restoration sites, mangrove monitoring and patrolling. Communication, education, and public awareness is conducted through meetings, assemblies, social media, radio programs, and file distribution in order to inform the public about the impact of climate change on proper management of the different ecosystem. Our actions today determine the survival of the future generation. We must not fail them. We must not turn a blind eye on the vulnerable that are already experiencing and the impact of the unpredictable and unforgiving climate. We must change for the better. We must change for the community. Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mayor. Um, you know, being a uh, um, um, being uh, uh, Occidental Mindoro, being uh, my hometown, so proud of what you have done and what you continue to do in this area. And I hope that uh, for the members who are listening, that uh, we can find ways on how we can continue to support or replicate this uh, activities that you have done and initiatives that you have done in other places. So, um, uh, Mayor, please uh, stand by for the uh, Q&A later on. We will move on to our next uh, panelist. Our second panelist may I call on the founder and executive director of uh, Litter of Light and My Shelter Foundation, my fellow Rotarian and classmate, Ilac, uh, Angelo Iliak Diaz. Iliak? Thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to speak here today. Uh, let me get to my slides. Oh, sorry. Uh, one, one, one second, sorry. Litter of, Litter of Light was founded uh, about of, of because of the large climate changes affecting the country. More than 20 typhoons, five of them destructive. One of the main problems really was the access to solar energy. Uh, which took about five months and about 40% of the cost uh, to ship it in uh, from other countries, mainly uh, uh, India and Hong Kong. <coughs> Our method was to use uh, simple red to build solar lights uh, that can be built with readily, readily available parts and recycled plastic bottles on the top, engaging one of the largest corporate social uh, uh, social civic sectors, which was the CSR of corporations, that anyone anywhere uh, in event of a disaster uh, would be able to volunteer to build solar lights by hand, mobile chargers and street lights. Uh, therefore, reducing the amount of children that had third degree burns, tents that were uh, destroyed by fire. And of course, women that were bringing food and money to these kind of camps, uh, which was very high in terms of incidents against women. Uh, very simply, uh, in 30 minutes, we could make anyone a solar engineer building solar lights, and it's all repairable and scalable. So many of these things uh, can be replicated, not centrally located in Manila, but uh, with parts that are available in cities nationwide. Uh, any, any corporate volunteer would reduce uh, carbon emissions by 1,000 kilos by replacing kerosene lamps which are very high and toxic emitters uh, uh, in the villages. So mo we have 13 million uh, kerosene lamps. And so we replace them with each that will last five years, but you can replace each battery with local available vape batteries. Uh, today, Litter of Light uh, is in 30 countries. We have 1,400 youth members that teach women cooperatives how to build it. And at the same time, uh, we do about a million lives affected per year. Uh, our initial one was really uh, John Kerry coming to um, uh, Haiyan and noticing hundreds and hundreds of houses that were lit when not a single generator was yet flown in. And so he called me over and he realized that I was making thousands of women build solar lights by hand with parts from Cebu and Legaspi. Uh, we're now doing a film with uh, Steven Spielberg about the power of an idea. It will take three years to shoot, uh, but uh, our prize was also uh, given by Al Gore uh, regarding this community base, because usually it's a grid, uh, high-tech, imported, patented, whereas we advocate that no country can be independent of sustainable energy, especially in the, in the, in the, um, in, in the village, unless the women themselves can build it, repair it, and replicate it. Uh, so we've been lighting up 7,000 house in Maasai tribes in Kenya, uh, teaching women cooperatives uh, to be able to buy uh, the local parts, uh, but also uh, build street lights so that they can maintain their communities. We work mostly with women cooperatives because they rent out, they rent out the solar lights and even in the villages, they rent out the street lights, such the same way that we pay taxes that pays for Meralco or our, our common street lighting, except they're the ones that earn from it. So instead of relying on kerosene, which brings out the money, they can now keep the money in the villages. Uh, during the new normal, 
we had to shift because no corporate would allow CSR for us to go inside the companies where we used to do about a thousand a week. Uh, so what we did is from the ice bucket challenge, we started challenging people online and each one challenges somebody else. And this one spiraled into an incredible, uh, into an incredible system where uh, more than 400 celebrities started building know, solar lights so from their houses and using their fan base to also learn how to make solar lights. So people that don't know how, even from home, uh, with our training system, uh, could learn how to do it. So I'll just skip this a bit. So but, do check out Leader of Light and try and build one of these yourselves. Uh, next thing we know, knew, there was 400, 3,000, and then about 6,000 people building it. The largest climate action in the world here in the Philippines, despite the most harsh lockdown, building from the safety of home. But before we gave it to villages, we decided to do something that was unprecedented. We decided to put this one into artworks to inspire, especially young people that were trapped at home for students that were high, getting high depression rates. They would sign the solar lights and these things, they would, you know, each one would be a pixel of light and we'll make, we would make some of the largest solar lights in the world, which now we are the world record holders. Uh, we built the largest image of Rizal in the world. Uh, to give you an idea, on the 500 years of Christianity, we built quickly uh, one of the largest Santo Ninos, uh, built by 3,000 Cebuanos from inside their house. And this allowed us to make solar lighting and energy participative, where everybody can be a solar engineer. But this knowledge can later be used uh, in times of disaster, especially in the Visayas region. Uh, we are the world, the Philippine representative to the World Expo. And we want to really to show that the Philippines does the large, the largest solar action by each person participating in this in a measurable, scalable way. But we give them to women villagers that can repair and scale it. So solar lighting done by thousands of people from home is unprecedented. Thank you to MAP for helping sponsor this. Uh, we will have a big event at the BGC at Fifth Avenue, where we will make the largest symbol of climate action in the world. Uh, in Fifth Avenue. So thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, once again, we're very excited to share this story to the World Expo at our own booth. Uh, and we hope for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ilyak. And uh, really, really very impressive achievements that you have done. Congratulations. And uh, that's why we uh, supported uh, uh, your work in the Quincentennial this year. So uh, uh, please stay on for the Q&A later. Um, I will now move on to the next panelist. And um, so now may I call on Deputy Speaker Lauren Legarda, representative of Lone District of Antique of the House of Representatives. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to all the officers and members of the Management Association of the Philippines. Uh, am I clear? Yes. Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, are. thank you. I decided not to read my prepared speech because considering the five to 10 minutes given me, I just wanted to stress the point that in the midst of a pandemic and the pandemic recovery, it is very clear that the only way we could recover from the COVID-19 pandemic is to the climate pathway. There is no other way. What do I mean? As we pause for this great reset, which is a subject matter of today's um, climate crisis, uh, webinar of the Management Association of the Philippines, we bear in mind all the existing laws that are already in our midst. May I mention the laws that I authored since 1998, which I believe need to be revisited, need to be known by everybody, and need to be implemented, not just by government institutions, but by the private sector as well. We have the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law way back in year 2000, which institutionalizes the segregation of waste at source, recycling and composting. We have the Clean Air Act. We have the Clean Water Act. We have the Renewable Energy Law, which should transition us to a low carbon pathway. And it is not a dichotomy of, is it for the environment or is it for the economy? Because both can be together. We also have the Climate Change Act, which established the Commission on Climate Change 
as well as the People's Survival Fund, which local governments like Sablayan, for example, in Occidental Mindoro can avail of, just like what Carmen in Surigao near Norte uh, through the establishment of a climate field school also access. So this is the funding mechanism of the Climate Change Act. We have the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Law. We have the Green Jobs Act, as well as the expanded National Integrated Protected Areas Act. These laws are equally important. These have been enacted into law from 20 years ago and the others just a few years ago. It is important that both the private sector, both business and industry, as well as the government sector cooperate and collaborate so that we see the effective implementation and the effective uh, results in communities if all these laws are actually implemented. Now, the ENIPAS, those are the expanded national integrated protected area system. For the longest time, we've only had less than a dozen protected areas in the country and there were 94 pending legislation. And what we did was we put them together under an expanded protected areas law, which was enacted way back in 2018. I'm proud to have been the author of this and to have put together 94 protection areas all over the country, both marine and terrestrial as well. Perhaps one pending legislation, which I would like our uh, business community to take interest in would be the ban on single use plastic, as well as the PENCAS, the uh, Environment Natural Accounting System. Your businessmen, you're both in industry and business and, and livelihoods. And we always measure um, whether in government or in the private sector, the, uh, the expenses uh, in government, we measure it in terms of GDP and GNP, but have we ever really taken a full accounting of the natural wealth of the nation? Have we ever really put in the effects, let's say, of uh, air pollution into the GAA, the General Appropriations Act, and what is apportioned for healthcare, for example, would be for curative instead of preventive? If we actually invest, for example, in disaster risk reduction and resilience and in building strong from the very start, then we would not have to spend a large part of our General Appropriations Act or our national budget into reconstruction and rehabilitation. So it is also important to know how much is our natural wealth? How much are we extracting in our consumptive lifestyle? And all of these have to be inputted in our, for me, in our national accounting of how much we're truly worth. So the PENCAS bill of which um, members of the um, MAP have also helped in, in drafting and crafting, as well as the ban on single use plastic are two pending legislation, not yet enacted unlike the others, which I already mentioned, and I believe it is in the art card. I would also like to share my prepared speech, but in the interest of brevity and of time, I would like to share it online uh, through my staff who's also online with all the members of the Management Association of the Philippines, as well as uh, to mayor and the other mayors of Mindoro, as well as to Ilac Diaz, who just uh, recent, uh, presented a few minutes ago. And so I would be happy to answer questions on how the pandemic recovery could also be the climate crisis recovery because I believe it is not going back to normal. It's not even going back to just the new norm. It must be a better normal. And what does a better normal mean? It means the awareness and full effective implementation of all our environmental laws, be it Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, Renewable Energy Law, and Dream Law, Environmental Education Awareness Act, and the e NIPAS law, among many others, which I labored on since 1998 and um, enacted in a span of 20 years. I know that it may be difficult. People say I might be dreaming to imagine the Philippines implementing all the environmental laws, which I wrote in my three terms as senator. 
but I believe it's doable because if even one barangay in the country segregates garbage at source, recycles and compost, why can't the rest of the barangays do? So I ask the members of the Management Association of the Philippines, do your companies and in your homes, do you actually segregate waste at source, recycle and compost? We can use our food waste and make it into organic compost. We can segregate bote, lata, and plastic and sell it or use it as pots uh, for gulay or herbs that you can plant at home. And those that are not recyclable are the only ones that will go to the environment sanitary landfill. And that would only be 20 or 30 percent um, that cannot be diverted. This is just one of the many laws, but I believe it is important because why did Ondoy happen in 2009, the flooding in just a few hours because our waterways were clogged with plastic and solid waste? And why do these floods continue to happen in the urban areas? Because we do not segregate garbage at source, recycle and compost. So for me, all the national laws that I authored redounds to the implementation on the ground. So all climate action, global, regional, national, is actually local. Just like politics, they say all politics is local. All climate action is actually local. So let's look introspectively into ourselves. Do we actually know these laws? Do we actually follow it? Do we actually implement it? It's not easy, but it's for the good of humanity. As they've always said, there is no planet B, and we must, we must do our share in saving the environment. So incidentally, happy World Environment Day last Saturday. And every day should be World Environment Day and Earth Day. It's for our sake and for the sake of our children and the next generation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, Lauren de Garda. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions uh, for you and for other two panelists, Mayor Andy and uh, Ilak. But before we go into the Q&A, we'd like to request for all the panelists um, and uh, Gigi to join us in a photo op and then we will open the Q&A. So if we can do that, Arnold, please. Okay, Joanna, ready, please. One, two, three. Another one, please. One, two, three. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. So we will now begin the Q&A um, and uh, we will start with uh, the deputy speaker. Uh, and um, so I would ask the MEP secretariat to manage and to help me with uh, the questions. Uh, I will begin with my first question, which is very interesting that the, the natural accounting um, was also mentioned by, uh, by the deputy speaker. But um, my question would, uh, would be on how do we compare the Philippines now with all the laws that, that we have um, uh, that are up for implementation at the local, how is the Philippines in terms of disaster preparedness compared to our Asian neighbors, deputy speaker? Yes, thank you for that. We know that way back, we would always be responding to disasters or even managing disaster risk. But since the law was enacted in 2010, and that was 11 years ago, and that's a National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Act, we have at least attempted to shift from disaster response to disaster preparedness. And they say, for every dollar invested in DRR is $5 saved. And so that's important, but it's not easy. And it is not, it's not take overnight to change a lifestyle for a paradigm shift for 100 million people. So it has greatly changed. We have outstanding local governments who have embraced DRR. I've been the nagging voice to implement disaster risk reduction measures. What are these? Having early warning systems, having PAGASA, our weather bureau, which incidentally, I also authored the law on the PAGASA Modernization Act uh, and provided them the resources to procure all the equipment needed for early warning systems, to be able to translate the early warning systems in languages, dialects, understandable to people up to the last mile. Long ago, maybe 15 or more ago, 
you will remember St. Bernard and Southern Leyte when the end dream law was not yet enacted. The Pag-asa warnings were in NCR and in Luzon, but before it reached the barangay, it took a while. But if there was real time information for the barangay, then perhaps the teachers and the children who perished in that mudslide, landslide, would not have happened. So my advocacy is not just giving information and early warning systems, but for it, for it to reach the last mile, because we are an archipelago of coastal areas and mountainous mountain ranges. We have 14 million indigenous peoples who live in forests, who may not understand the English pag-asa warnings, who may not have a cell phone with signal, who may not have um, uh, anything uh, that would be understood by them. So we may have the science, but to be able to reach the vulnerable populations who are at risk, we need to translate it in terms and in a language, in a dialect understood by your general population. As many as there are eth ethno-linguistic groups is the kind of translations we must have. I know it's a challenge, but I've advocated for this. So also all these laws that we mentioned, it's there. And as I said, there are communities who follow and many who don't. Mm -hmm. So bakit sutil? Bakit mm -hmm. matigas ang ulo? Bakit mm -hmm. hindi kaya? Bakit naman kaya ng iba? Bakit mm -hmm. maraming outstanding? That's why when I uh, was a senator, I worked with the ombudsman, environmental ombudsman, so that the fight cases would be filed against local governments who are non-compliant with mm -hmm. our environmental laws. As I said, every action emanates from the local. Kung bawat isang municipality at isang siyudad ay sumusunod sa clean air, clean water, ecological solid waste management law, at sa RE law, at sa NDREAM law, at sa INIPAS, if your backyard, the rivers, the lakes, the mountains, would not be ravaged the way some are, then our life would be better. So we've laid out the policies. I've even funded the laws. So why is it so difficult to implement it by some? But I said, there are outstanding local governments who really follow the laws to the letter. Now, how is the, Fili I'll go back to your question. How is the Philippines faring? We have greatly improved. We, it's difficult to compare. Because how can you compare yourself with Singapore? With, mm. We are 108 million, they have a couple of millions. How do we compare ourselves uh, with other countries? But Bangladesh um, is a developing nation as well. They have been outstanding as, in so far as preventing the loss of lives through the institutionalization of early warning systems, which are not necessarily high tech. They, just use red flags or even bells. And I don't have the figures now in a span of how many years when tsunamis came, they, the loss of lives uh, really uh, diminished or, or, or went down because of the use, utilization of early warning systems. So we could do better, but we are far, far better than where we were 10 years ago. There's still some change of mindset necessary for people who just want the canned goods mentality. To may bagyo, bibigay ng bigas at delata. But mm. the best is to make sure our communities are resilient. Do not build a school or a barangay hall or allow in esteros and canal and reclaimed areas which should be water or in areas which based on the geohazard map are purple areas which are dangerous. So if we follow the multi-hazard maps and the geohazard maps, which is integral in our DRR law, then perhaps we lessen the possibility of risk for these areas. There's much more uh, aside from early warning systems, aside from uh, putting in a language understandable the Pag-asa warnings, even perhaps growing our own food. Why do our food have to come from 
far, far away? And why do people have to go hungry in a country so rich in natural resources and anything you, any seed you put on the ground will actually grow. And I, if I may share, I've been growing my own food for many years. I have been sharing the food I grow. Bahay um, Kubo, simple, nothing fancy. Bahay Kubo vegetables with frontliners in the past year and a half. I've been uh, giving it to community pantries of late. But even before then, I grow my own food. I do not buy. I share it with all my staff and their families. And I share it with frontliners. And this can be done in a small scale. You don't have to have a big farm. You can even do it at home. Because all the laws that I offered complement each other. Pag ikaw ay naghiwalay ng basura, sa nabubulok at hindi niya bubulok, at gumagawa ng sariling organic compost, ay maaring gamitin sa mga bote, lata, at plastic na siyang gagamitin para magpasibol ng alukbati, malunggay, kung ano man. Um, is this a subject matter that is not relevant to the Management Association of the Philippines? No, it is very relevant because it is how we should live our lives. It is how perhaps both officers and business owners, as well as uh, housewives, as well as um, working uh, people like us should actually live. I know it's not easy because the mindset is a, cons it's a consumer society. It's a consumptive um, lifestyle, but we must we must learn to to veer away from that kind of um, lifestyle and have that great reset as the subject matter of your webinar is today. Thank you so much for that. Um, it's interesting that I think the pandemic has also brought uh, some uh, good things, uh, including uh, people going to uh, going back to the farm and, and even in their doing urban farming is, is one of the things uh, that uh, have uh, come about uh, during this pandemic. No? And uh, we've seen also the change in, um, in, in the air. Uh, pollution is not as bad because there's uh, during the ECQ and the MECQ, we've had uh, lesser uh, number of vehicles uh, on the road. So, uh, so I think uh, at least for the year and a half, um, something good came out of uh, of, uh, of the pandemic. So let me just um, uh, do a follow up on a uh, uh, one of the questions of the Q and A pertaining to Pasig River reportedly being the worst polluted of plastics in the world, and that the Philippines is the third worst polluter of plastic worldwide. Is this true? Um, uh, uh, that's true. Um, uh, that's true. Depending on which organization says it. They say we're the top uh, plastic um, polluter in the world. The others say that we are uh, top three, whichever. It doesn't matter whether we are number one <laughs> worst polluter or we are um, number three. It's still bad. Uh, it's plastics, true. microplastics, kinakain na mga isda. They sometimes mistake it for food. So what will happen to our fish or folks catch? What will happen? to our food on the table. The ban on single-use plastic, which I filed, which was already passed on second reading in the House of Representatives, need not have been enacted. Why? Because we already have the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law 20 years ago. When I wrote it as a young senator in 1998, people were wondering, bakit basura ang kanyang legislate? And then the Payatas tragedy happened, and then it was enacted into law still pending with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources is the uh, environmentally acceptable uh, packaging. That was part of my 2000, year 2000 law, Republic Act 9003. Would you believe 20 years later, they have not listed the environmentally acceptable packaging. Therefore, the law is not completely and fully implemented. We have the National Solid Waste Management uh, Commission that is supposed to list all of this. And so because the DNR reneged on that provision of RA 9003, I filed the ban on single-use plastic. We, uh, plastic comes from fossil fuel. It's petrochemical. It is not just harmful to the fish. It is harmful to everybody. 
I'm not saying ban all plastics. It's just single-use plastic, which harms our oceans, harms our health, harms the marine animals that we consume that is part of our lifestyle as an archipelagic nation. So I can actually share with you um, more. Um, um, if I have time, I can read it. Um, plastic products um, have exceedingly long lifetimes and they continue to be a waste management issue in the Philippines. Uh, they destroy our ecosystems. They negatively affect our marine food chain. They are a climate related concern because the production, the refining, and the manufacture is a source of greenhouse gas emissions as it uses fossil fuels in this extraction and in its transport. And as we know, greenhouse gas emissions from the plastic life cycle threaten the ability of the global community to keep global temperature rise to below 1.5 degrees. But I will not do the technical issues because that would not be um, perhaps doable or completely understandable. I just wanted to say that it is a wake up call now during the pandemic that we change our lifestyle by really using what is environmentally acceptable. Instead of single use plastic, we can do eco bags when we do our marketing and our grocery. Uh, that is something so simple. I've been doing that maybe for 10, 15 years. Um, we can actually uh, use recycled materials in, 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 in doing all this. So single-use plastic uh, destroys our marine life. It, is, it affects our health. It comes from fossil fuels and should be regulated at the very least, banned if possible. I know, again, it's something that is not easy to do, but if only the DNR would come up with a list nationally of environmentally accepted packaging, then we would have no problem. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker. We'll now move on to uh, Mayor Andy uh, to just have a good segue to the local um, implementation. Uh, the question to you, uh, Mayor Andy, is how do you encourage community involvement in, in addressing or implementing the, the various uh, initiatives that you have uh, done in Sablayan? Ano po yung mga, ha, ha, paano po natin na-encourage uh, ang, ang mga kababayan natin to do this? Ang dami pong na-mention, Deputy Speaker, na mga laws. No? So how are we, uh, paano po kami makakatulong also in, in that way? So what, what are, what, how do you involve? And then how else can we help you in that uh, initiative? Mayor, I think naka-mute po kayo. There. Local government shall identify in allocated area establishment of barangay community will be utilized the planting activities and the taking care of such in the citizens' yards to be encouraged as part of the activity works. Barangay and the community shall also be tapped in the movement being in the river banks to prevent social erosion. Including his driver, they're also making me pay for the driver. Livelihood of the people. In this way, it's mentioned about the community will take the project as their own. And the spirit of Sabayan also implements programs for the community by organizing the people's organization to respect and conserve those conservation areas. And then the municipality is right by the vice city friendly. Mayor, Mayor Andy, I'm so Ma sorry. Uh, we we want to make sure that we catch what you say. No? Kung minsan po your microphone is, uh, um, imagine a, to change yung ano niya. So if you can just um, uh, allow us please to, or, or some senior staff to, to help you with the microphone. So sorry, we could, we could barely hear you. 
And then we'd like to be able to capture what you say about the local um, initiatives that you have done following the national um, uh, concerns that have been addressed by the deputy speaker. The committee will be planting of and taking care of planters. Planting and caring of prisoners is in charge. It has been encouraged to the also conducted regularly to ensure that the members of the knowledge and skills to protect and conserve the area. Communication, education, and public awareness are also conducted to Um, Mayor, I'm so sorry. It's still um, it's still inaudible. No, we, we really could barely hear a few. Um, if you can just maybe get your microphone closer, I'm so sorry. We really would like to catch what you were trying to say, um, but we couldn't uh, catch it. So perhaps if we can just make the microphone closer to you to your mouth, please. Thank you. Pasensya na po, super importante po kasi what uh, you can say so that we can learn from your um, accomplishments and see how we can replicate this in other areas as well. Um, incidentally, we have... Uh, we, we have, the event is up to 2.30 and uh, we're actually at just 1.32. So if there are more questions, please uh, post your questions in the Q&A box. The local government units are provided trees to be planted through the establishment and maintenance of nurseries. The Barangay LGU, in collaboration with the DNR Centro and local government unit Menro, shall identify and allocate an area for the establishment of Barangay Tree Park. The community will mobilize for the tree planting activities in taking care of such trees planted. Planting and caring of trees in the city's charge shall be encouraged and also part of the advocacy works. The Barangay in the community can also be tapped in bamboo planting in the river banks to prevent soil erosion and also serve as livelihood of the people. In this way, as mentioned above, the community will take part in the project of their own, value it and making care of it. The municipality of Splayan also implements programs for the community by organizing the people's organizations to protect and conserve the conservation areas, the protected areas. In turn, the bonus party provides biodiversity friendly livelihood to ensure the sustainability of the protection and conservation initiatives. Training seminars and meetings with SPO are also conducted regularly to ensure that the members have sufficient knowledge skills to protect and ensure the area. Communication, education, and public awareness are also conducted through meetings, flyer distribution, dissemination of information through Facebook page and radio program. Okay, so um, thank you for that, uh, Mayor. There is uh, another question here, a follow-up from Trin uh, Custodio. And uh, her question is uh, to you, Honorable Mayor of Sublion. Um, the question is, how do you suggest the business community 
help address your biggest Medisa. challenges. What are your biggest challenges? Okay. And um, in order for Sublayan to unlock the potential of its natural capital and be a lasting model of economic development and poverty reduction within ecosystem limits. I suppose, what would be your biggest challenge and uh, how can the business community like MAP help you in your biggest challenges? Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Uh, were you able to uh, get the question, Mayor? Sablayan is a developing municipality with a lot of potential for economic growth, with the increase of natural disasters ravaging the municipality. Disaster preparedness is not only a government duty but also of its citizen. Policies regarding disaster preparedness was already put in place with the local government. Proper waste disposal, regulation and provision of building houses, rather infrastructure in critical areas such as sea rivers and creeks, and retrofitting houses based on the regulation put in place by the government are some of the policies implemented or disaster preparedness. Mm -hmm. Implementation of the adherence of the community is key in making this successful. The government also prepares itself in case of disaster struck for purchasing life and saving equipment, conducting training and simul simulation exercises for MDRRMO personnel, and conducting coordination with other agencies concerned with disaster preparedness, the channeling and the various river systems like Amnai, Malangawing, Mumpung, and Patrick. It also, it's also an important task in disaster preparedness. Policies about long-term solution on disaster preparedness should also be put in place. Vulnerable analysis on building and critical places should be conducted and mitigating measures should be put in place. Recovery policy should also be put in place. Temporary housing, grants and medical care and affected areas are to be included in the policy. Being a responsible citizen is the key to safety. With the cooperation of the people and the government, the goal of being prepared for any disaster can be achieved. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll now move on to uh, Ilyak, and there's another question for the deputy speaker. So Ilyak, in your presentation, you mentioned uh, uh, the, su the support of the youth and a lot of initiatives that are towards uh, the youth. Uh, do you have any that includes the initiative to be in partnership with uh, small medium enterprises as well as uh, uh, corporations or, uh, or uh, business communities? And, and how can we help you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that question. Actually, uh, we are uh, doing one of the largest climate actions uh, in the world uh, right now from home. So uh, right now, MAP has, uh, has uh, done, I think, about 20 solar lights. Uh, and we're hoping that more will be able to build it. We're doing one of the largest artworks all around the city, empty parks like Luneta, uh, on top of buildings, uh, empty schools. So I'll just show this to you quickly, uh, whereby uh, every month, Every month we do some of the largest artworks. Uh, like this is on top of City Hall with uh, 600 young people. And of course, some corporate volunteers that uh, help build the solar lights by hand. So it's really it's really like Dawad Kalinga of solar where everybody can participate in making the solar lights. And so we're, you know, we're asking, like uh, we're moving from city to city uh, to help build these artworks, but afterwards, uh, like in UP in Quezon City, they decided to, we're making, uh, because it's the 75th year of the United Nations, we decided to get corporate sponsors uh, to help us build the, the largest SDG tribute in the world. So we're now only on our fourth, uh, but we're hoping really to complete the 17 SDGs since the Philippines is one of the founding four Asian nations of the United Nations. So uh, we're going around the city, Quezon City, uh, uh, Makati, uh, we're going city to city and we're hoping with the MAP we could build more of these thousand lights. Each of these lights goes to like Wawa Dam, Angat Dam, 
Uh, Mindoro, so we're not yet po, mayor. Uh, we hope to be able to bring some to you because uh, we're in the other side, the other Mindoro. Uh, but also uh, Daeta. So because the lack of tourism, so many cultural areas uh, are lacking. Uh, we will be building on July 4. Uh, we're now working with BGC to build the largest uh, 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 SDG for climate action uh, here in Fifth Avenue. We're trying to contact the local government because we, we, we want to make it bigger than the mall, no? the, SDG, uh, the, the SDG 13. So we're right now uh, only allowed by BGC to pick it on the wall, but uh, on the top of the mall, but we're hoping uh, to put it on the street because it's on a Saturday, Sunday. So we're hoping for MAP members to join us on July 4 as we make the largest solar artwork uh, for goal now for for calling for climate change in the world. Uh, we are heading for Scotland for the COP26, and so uh, it looks something like this. Now you could see how 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 wide this is. So we're hoping for this is a human powered solar image. So these are all built by the people, and so we're we're hoping that you could give us 30 minutes of your time. Like a lot of members and CEOs are, are finding it hard to, uh, you know, to, 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 to understand uh, why sweat equity. Because if you don't give any, even 30 minutes of your time to build a solar light for others, then uh, how can we even unite people for climate change if you cannot give 30 minutes of your time to build a solar light that lasts for five years and reduces carbon emission by 1,000 kilos? So, uh, many of them are young people uh, in, inside their apartments. So they really, you know, with the Greta, with the Greta movement, many, many young people want to speak out in cl for climate change, but can't. So this is sort of their, you know, um, uh, in representation. So they speak out by building solar lights. They all go, they all post it on social media. So if you go to Litter of, Litter of Light on Instagram, uh, before they challenge anybody, they build the solar lights and they challenge others. And so other people can see this transparency that you're actually building something. Young people love, you know, they, they love the, the, about the climate, but they want action. And so to keep on talking about big words, big policies, uh, young people understand it very simply. Are, are, are the, are, you know, can I see some of my business leaders, icons, uh, influencers, normal people, doctors, uh, build something, uh, you know, to walk the talk, no? So, so this building a solar light by home is unprecedented. And we were very surprised that uh, we actually got thousands of people inside working with their families, their children, in advocating in a very measurable and scientific way uh, solar action, not uh, you know, not just waiting for top-down, large government, large uh, installations. It, it, people want to be part of it. So uh, these large-scale inst uh, installations is going to end up in BGC, and we hope MAP members uh, can give a moment of their time, 30 minutes of their time, to build solar lights to help, as I said, build the largest uh, 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 symbol for climate action in the world. We're going to do this in front of the of the PSI for, for the Philippine Stock Exchange. So mm. it's really symbolic that the industry uh, talk about it, but at the same time, even contribute that 30 minutes to build solar lights and post it uh, online that you actually uh, are, are giving, a, you know, even a token sweat equity uh, that you believe in it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Like, I think uh, certainly something that we can announce and uh, remind to all the members of MAP uh, uh, on how we can support this even individually. Uh, let me um, switch back again to Deputy Speaker Legarda. Uh, and the question is on the recent lifting of the ban on new mining projects. What is your view on this? And also following um, the recent announcement of the DOE promoting LNG, what is your view on both? Okay, the recent uh, lifting of the ban. Okay. We have a, yes. an antiquated mining law <laughs> that needs to be revisited. And that is why I believe that the PENCAS bill, I think Dr. Flora, Flora Claudio is online as well. Hi, Flora. Yes, yes uh, her team had helped uh, me, Attorney Ipat Luna, in drafting this very important measure. It's um, not enough to talk about it now, but it's simply does a natural resource accounting of the PR. Here we are giving our finite resources, but giving it almost for free because this is an 
aged law that needs to be revisited so that at least if we cannot uh, ban mining altogether because it may not be feasible, then we at least take care of the communities where the mines um, are extracted so that there's also rehabilitation that must be done to the environment so that uh, the danger is posed to communities, whether through mudslides, landslides, or even the pollution of our rivers. You would remember uh, Buwak Marinduque decades ago, right? Uh, uh, the, the, the toxic poisoning of the river that were brought about by uh, mining uh, techniques which were not attuned to the environment. So it is a government's prerogative it is the president's prerogative to lift the mining ban. However, we must in Congress revisit the mining law to ensure that communities are taken care of, the environment is rehabilitated and that we are able to utilize the uh, fruits of the earth equitably and not just exported to other jurisdictions and other countries and leaving the communities poor, as poor as it was when it was extracted. So I have a passion for keeping nature the way it is, but that's in my utopian world. In the real world, we must be able to balance um, environmental protection as well as the utilization of our resources. But when there are finite resources, we must at least uh, make sure that we rehabilitate the environment. I know that the present mining law has a rehabilitation fund. Is that actually being implemented, we ask ourselves. And so I believe in the Senate, I filed a um, revisions, amendments to the Mining Act. I need to look at it now that I'm representing uh, our province. If I had refiled it, in the House of Representatives. So that's my take on that. Perhaps that's one study that we could do uh, mm -hmm. in line with my uh, pushing of the PENCAS bill. What was the other question? I'm sorry. On the liquefied uh, natural gas, uh, that was uh, the DOE's um, promoting it, LNG. Well, what is your take on that? Oh, LNG or was it nuclear? No, LNG. Okay because the DOE had many pronouncements. Uh, they had also, first, uh, the Department of Energy had put a cap on new coal, on greenfield coal projects. Uh, I think, yes, they, yes, I remember now. I was in the Senate when they were asking for a budget for an area in Batangas would have been a staging area. I'm not too familiar, but uh, with a new pronouncement on LNG. Um, they had also made pronouncements on um, promoting uh, nuclear energy, and that's a, a, a different topic altogether. We have an RE law that was way back in 2008. We have not fully implemented it, all the provisions, and the air is free, the sun is free, the wind is free. Uh, why don't we fully utilize our renewable energy law to make sure that our sources of energy are not just safe and healthy, but also affordable and they're just here. So why do we have to import expensive fossil fuel when we have our renewable energy law that focuses on indigenous sources of energy? So it would really be up to the business community to industry as well as to the financial institutions to support investors in the uh, to support the RE law. Um, I respect the DOE. I um, worked with them in government. Um, I believe that they've had many many pronouncements and provisions on um, on on the importance of the RE law. I am not familiar with recent statements on LNG or on nuclear. Um, all I know was a few months ago, they had put a ban on greenfield coal projects. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Diaz. Uh, you have an additional question for you, but I will also um, craft a question that will be related to another question that was posted in the Q and A. And I will ask for I will ask the question for all three of you. And uh, the question is on the what you can what what your view is or what you can say about the environment impact of the use of face shield. This question is from Curie uh, Kator uh, or Kator and. Uh, uh, so this is pertaining to the environmental impact of the use of face shield. And since this is just maybe thrown or how we uh, do waste management on this, relating to how can we convert waste to energy um, using technologies that can allow us to do that if, if, um, if we have any. So we'll start with you, uh, D.S. Uh, Legarda. Yes. When, why, when I crafted the ecological solid waste management law, obviously I did not anticipate COVID or the massive use of masks and face shields. And that really, I admit, is a big problem. But we also have a provision on infectious waste. And I believe that this would fall under infectious waste. As I said, if we divert bottle lata plastic, organic food waste, dry leaves and twigs, and we use all of this as well as paper, then the non-recyclable latak or residual waste, as we'd call it, as well as the infectious waste for which face shields and medical waste and masks would fall under can probably be uh, used, um, not put in a landfill because it's infectious, but there must be a, a process, a technology uh, so that before it is disposed in landfills, it would have been, I use the word sanitized, but I'm sure that could be a medical term for that. Mm -hmm. Now, waste to energy uh, is another pending uh, bill in both houses of Congress because the 1999 Clean Air Act, which we authored, had banned the utilization of incinerators. So I'm not certain whether the waste to energy technologies of the present would be entirely different from 20 years ago. Definitely, mm -hmm. I keep an open mind. We need to revisit this. And um, there are many waste to energy technologies, but we don't know the heat level, the emission level. This is something mm -hmm. for the scientists to agree on. Mm -hmm. The staunch environmentalists I know would be against WTE. But I, as a lawmaker, cannot just say I will not listen. I will listen and I will assess. In fact, I need to review all my environmental laws because I did that in 1998. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I return to the Senate, I hope I will, I need to revisit environmental laws I did 22 years ago and see how it is applicable in the new norm in the pandemic recovery. Mm -hmm. But again, I will insist on my PENCAS, on natural resource accounting. Mm -hmm. I will insist on the strict implementation and full implementation of ESWM. That's basic to us. Mm -hmm. Sa ulan, sa baha, kung tayo'y may open dumps pa rin, which is outlawed, baha ng baha, it will never change. Ondoy will happen every time it rains. Mm -hmm. So I appeal to everyone, uh, big and big businesses, big and small, to simply be strict about the implementation of environmental laws because it makes it makes good economic sense. It makes good business sense uh, to follow this in our household, in our businesses, and in our communities as well. Okay, thank you, Diaz. What about you, Ilan? What you. do you think of the environment? You know, what is the that impact on face shield? Um, I'm thinking that perhaps you can think of something uh, that you can uh, do. You know, in relation to uh, you know you having built the the, the Coca Cola bottles, right, and uh, the plastic bottles, and using it into solar light. So, is there anything that you can think of that perhaps can convert that into something um, you know good? Well, you know, it is. Uh, it, 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 there is no, you know, as uh, taking off from uh, this inspirational uh, talk by Lauren Legarder, there's no single plastic that has been created that is not in existence today. So as soon as you, you create that plastic, 
uh, that will be in existence uh, you know, uh, for the next hundred years. So it's just very uh, uh, to, to understand that during this time of pandemic and the face shields and the face mask, uh, that will exist uh, for many years after this generation has, has gone. So, uh, but also uh, that there are uh, ways to reuse plastic. Actually, the trash heaps are the most unused mining sites uh, in the world. The, the, the limit, the, the stuff that we throw away is actually of great, great wealth. In fact, we should start putting a lot more money, uh, not just in burying it, but discovering new ways to reuse it. So plastic can be made back into pellets. Uh, what I know is some of them are being used uh, into, you know, uh, uh, how do you call it, lintels for low-income housing, into housing blocks. So with the human creativity, uh, there should be more money to really uh, reuse, no? reuse uh, uh, what we throw away because it, it is recyclable, it is rebuildable. And to, to, to even understand our new economy or the illogical way our new economy is, we dig you know, the materials uh, like you know, uh, fossil fuels all the way down from you know, hundreds of kilometers from the earth. Uh, we truck it uh, all the way, we barge it, we truck it, and then we make it into, into you know, uh, cutlery, uh, plastic spoons or plastic uh, straws, and then we throw it away in a second. So, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that, you know, it takes such a long, uh, exhaustive way to make plastic and then just to throw it away so quickly. So this kind of consumption, of course, as, as, as said, has its limits. Uh, it has what is called is, you know, there's, there's what is called peak oil. There's only so much that oil uh, can be extracted from the earth. It's un not unlimited. In fact, uh, any smart developing nation uh, is already going into solar. That way they don't have to extract all the oil. So sometimes people talk about, you know, how many barrels per day. Uh, in the Middle East, they're actually limiting it so that it stays in the ground because these are natural assets. Why burn it indefinitely when you know that it only, only make you poorer? So uh, once again, as we start burning these natural and limited assets, why are other nations trying to keep it in the ground? It's because it's healthier and at the same time, uh, it are limited assets. So uh, reusing this kind of materials that have been extracted already uh, is, is very important. And this also goes to the way that we're delivering, you know, goods in this kind of new economy to have thousands of motorcycles burning tons and tons of, you know, of, of, of fuel uh, will cost us in the future, which is, uh, you know, uh, a, a time of scarcity. Uh, all of these packaging and, and, and these are, you know, trees that, you know, cannot be rebuilt uh, in, in a couple of years. So uh, all of this will come to fruition. Uh, this kind of new economy, uh, even the internet, uh, what we're using, uses an exceedingly amount of, of, of energy and power uh, and coal to keep the internet infrastructure alive. Bitcoin, uh, all of this will bite us later on. But of mm -hmm. course, you know, we're talking about several years. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, we have to be conscious that we cannot do the go-go 80s or go-go 70s. Uh, there's already mm -hmm. this shortage happening. I mm -hmm. mean, even clean water is, you know, what used to be something so available is, is not anymore done mm -hmm. because of pollution. So uh, how can a population of 100 million uh, succeed in an unsustainable system? Every major, uh, you know, a societal collapse from Easter Island, uh, they, they've been warning us already that, you know, you cannot keep on extracting from the ground, cutting your trees, because there will be no way the, Ma the Mayans to be able to, serve, to, to, to keep an economy alive. And, and our economy is alive because we bring in, you know, tons and tons of food from all over the world just to have, you know, a, a lunch, a regular lunch. Uh, do you know that Manila only has five days of food you know going back against to you know this keynotes of deputy speaker lauren legarde which is we really in manila don't have food and so when they close down the the, the city uh suddenly without trucking in food without thinking about this you know food supply 
I had the experience of seeing hundreds of people move out of the city, like EDSA was like, you know, it looked like an apocalypse now. There were hundreds and hundreds of people that were walking out of the city because of the difficulty of, of finding food. Uh, you know, uh, Manila, as I said, only has five days of food. And so people were walking out as far as, you know, I've heard of stories as far as Pangasinan. Some people had to walk all the way there because of this, you know, this, this lack of understanding that food is not, you know, is not grown locally. So as we shut down economies, you have to understand that, you know, our economies rely on huge transport transportations to supply a city. Uh, even wood to, to realize that, you know, we're taking away so much resources from the provinces just to survive in Manila. Do you know how many tons of wood are cut down just for coal and charcoal burnt uh, to be able to keep Manila alive? keep Manila alive so you know at the bottom of the pyramid can cook their food so Manila is not you know it's it's, it's highly dependent on the provinces but also it's extracting too much from the provinces unless it, unless it is become sustainable so that is my answer okay thank you Ilak. um there is an add-on uh, to this discussion from an anonymous attendee uh, and he says or she not a question but an add-on the latest development from my scientist colleagues, especially in polymers that are used to produce plastic, intervene at the development of plastic level, not at the end and after use of the plastic product. So research is focused now on the polymers to the, to the oh, sorry. So research is focused now on the polymers so the plastic products can may either self-destruct or be easily reused indefinitely. I suppose these are new technologies that are coming in. Um, so this is just to, uh, to add on to that. Um, I will before I ask uh, Mayor Andy for your uh, take also on the face shield no, in Sablayan. I don't know if I, I hope that it is also still being used um, as, as part of our compliance with the IETF for the guidelines on uh, you know during this pandemic. Um, I would, there is uh, just a question that is uh, posted to, uh, if, to the uh, Legarda, and then I'll go back again to you. Um, if, I, if, 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 I may, if I may just quickly, sure. uh, there is a lot of companies that are also spreading this information saying that the plastics are 100% degradable. Uh, this is not true. Uh, a lot of it decomposes only substantially, but not completely. So. Uh, there should be also a law for for uh, companies that are getting tax deductibles on uh, this this kind of saying that it's hundred percent recyclable when it's actually not. Uh, we won't start naming names, but we have tested uh, many of them. Uh, but some of the plastic bags actually just break apart, but do not dis uh, do not uh, disintegrate. So. There is a uh, there is this uh, there is this uh, there should be some way to to say that you know you cannot print unless it's hundred uh, percent biodegradable. So anyway, I just wanted to put that that uh, there's a lot of plastic mm -hmm. that is just breaking apart, but still going into streams and of course going to fish in our our water streams. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ila. Um, I believe uh, DS. Uh... Legarda needs to um, to leave earlier. So, if there are any questions, final question for her, please uh, uh, please post that uh, now um, so that we can ask her forever hold your peace. In the meantime, um, while we're waiting for the final question for uh, for DS uh, Legarda, and uh, we'll ask her also for her final word, uh, Mayor Andy, the Mayor Andy for the face shield no that you are that is being implemented for use no in uh, sublayan how are you addressing the 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 waste uh, management on that uh, especially because in this country i've seen photos and videos of uh, face mask and face shields that are in the ocean no is that something na nakikita din po ninyo that you see in uh, in sublayan mayor you are on mute we have uh, recently developed from the Sablayan COVID-19 related healthcare waste management plan to ensure that these waste are not mixed with other types of waste. We are in coordination with the DNR MMB for possible treatments and disposal 
of these types of waste. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at least merong, uh, there's something that's uh, that's being done in uh, the local area. Um, just uh, before I ask and uh, move on to uh, Diaz uh, Legarda, I'd like to mention to you, Mayor Andy, that there is a post from uh, um, from uh, Cora Claudio, who is a uh, who has a long time. Um, proponent of uh, the climate crisis in, in uh, MAP and now with CCSND. And uh, she mentioned that uh, she has done during the MAP Sustainable Development uh, Committee last year and a few years ago, uh, that uh, we have done some work in San Jose, Occidental Mindoro, uh, which actually won a Mimaropa Award. And, uh, and so with the, with the reforestation being done there, uh, there could be a collaboration also that can be done in Sablayan for uh, for your uh, local area. She's just asking uh, questions on like how many hectares you still have to reforest um, if there are Mangyan communities in your area. So uh, so she can uh, so she can reach out to you, I suppose, on behalf of the group and the committee uh, to see how we can work with you on that. Um, we have the Aroyan Sibaran Mala Malati Conservation Area, okay. which is almost 400 hectares of forest that needs a uh, reforestation. We also have the IPs in the area who can benefit with this program. We also have the Mindoro Pines Conservation Area with more or less 100 hectares of forest. Mangan communities also live near the area protects and patrols it. Okay, so um, so I suppose uh, um, Cora, we will be able to reach out to the May, to Mayor Andy for uh, for that, no? Okay, so I'll move on to, uh, so thank you, Mayor Andy, and I will uh, move on to uh, Diaz uh, Legarda for a last message before I let you go. Um, I know that uh, you uh, have to go to another event. Uh, thank you very much to the Management Association of the Philippines. I think there's no better time to say that responding to both the COVID-19 pandemic recovery and the climate crisis has uh, become a moral imperative for governments and a social responsibility for all of us now. And there's no other way to do the pandemic recovery except through the climate pathway, and especially for the vulnerable populations when having less in life means actually losing life. So here in our country, as I've repeatedly said, we have the numerous laws and policies focused on addressing the causes and the impacts of climate change, managing climate and disaster risks so that the nation will actually survive and thrive in the present era of climate change. Uh, laws, however, will be ink on paper or will just be policies in webinars such as this. We are just part of the equation and the effective, efficient, implementation through good governance could actually spell the difference. So I can't say I've done my part. I will continue to do my part in my oversight function as legislator to also revisit the laws and to make sure they are applicable and implementable on the ground. I join NGOs like Litter of Light. I join associations of the business community like the Management Association um, of the Philippines and as what Gigi Montenola said, the foremost business association. I join local governments um, of Occidental Mindoro in Sablayan as well, in ensuring that our environment is healthy, safe, and resilient. And I will ensure that our laws are implementable on local climate action on the ground. Remember, as we speak now, it is the first year of the decade of the United Nations decade on ecological restoration. We must restore recreate and reimagine. 2030 is the end, end of that decade. And 2030, incidentally, is also the end of the sustainable development goals. So all of these discussions fall into the SDGs. I am here, not just as lawmaker, but also as a farmer at heart and who has worked with the indigenous peoples for many, many decades. So thank you to the MAP for this opportunity to be able to speak to you. And I'm a proud mother of a youngest MAP member, who is Leandro uh, Legarda de Viste. So um, I'm proud that many years ago, when he was just starting out his renewable energy business, he has been a member of the Management Association 
of the Philippines. So I'm the proud mom of a youngest MAP member. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, Deputy Speaker. Thank you so much for your message. I'll move on to you, Ilak, for your uh, final message as well. Um, we have been supportive of your initiatives, and so uh, we'd be happy to hear also from you for your uh, final message. Thank you very much. I think uh, one of the eye-opening lessons really was the fact that, you know, uh, during, during uh, uh, this uh, COVID, we realize that you know there is a priority of of nations especially when it comes to especially when it comes to to uh to resources no so uh as covid you know as we have this kind of uh, uh, as we have this kind of you know access problems to covid uh you know injections and drugs and access it'll the same it'll be the same thing with the climate crisis which will be many many times more than this when climate crisis strikes on a global basis, uh, nations will prioritize their own uh, citizens. Uh, resources will be prioritized to their own citizens. So unless the Philippines really realizes that it's on its own, that it has to be sustainable, that it can do when climate crisis really exacerbates, uh, there will be limited resources. And so a nation that is not self uh, does not have its own self energy, that does not have its self food, uh, that will not have its own way to mitigate the crisis of ongoing pandemics, uh, will be left out or else will be on the bottom most uh, rung. Uh, just as in COVID, it is the same ratio that's going to happen during climate crisis. So a nation that's unprepared in the next 10 years, as Lauren Legarda, Speaker Lauren Legarda said, as the last decade of action, the last generation to be able to avoid the tipping point, uh, you will realize that uh, we are uh, supposed to already prepare uh, for the inability, inability, in, inability, inevitability, sorry, inevitability of suffering a shortage uh, in preparation of a crisis. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Iliak. And uh, we, you know, as you know, we, we are very supportive. In fact, in the Q&A, there was a message there that uh, we will continue to support. Cora Cloud is, uh, is a proponent also for that. So we're uh, very happy to see how other communities, business communities can help you. Um, and so thank you again for uh, joining us in this event. Um, I would like now to ask Mayor Andy for your final message. Uh, um, if you can say something, po, Mayor, how we can help you no, in the uh, supply. Mm -hmm. In order to reduce the impact of climate change. Mayor? Yes, Mayor, for your final message, Mayor. First of all, I want to thank you for considering me as one of the finalists. I just want to stress out that the local ordinance adopted by the Assembly Bayan will be fully implemented in order to reduce the impact of the climate change and sustain all the projects, livelihood, that could really help most especially the IPS community. Bringing or giving more knowledge regarding climate change to really make Shabdaya to be a win-win municipality for climate change. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, also the same thing, no? Um, in, uh, in this event, we actually have uh, some commitments uh, coming from uh, some members of the MAP who will continue to support the local, and so that includes supply. So at this point, I'd like to thank you, Mayor Andy, um, uh, 
Ilak, Ilak Diaz and uh, uh, Diaz Legarda for sharing your time and expertise with us today. Uh, before we adjourn, I know it's a bit early, but uh, we have plenty of time to at uh, least for uh, President Gigi to give us his uh, parting words. Um, President Gigi. Okay. Uh, I cannot, my video is not working. Okay, Arnold. There you go. Okay, so so um, precisely as Deputy Speaker uh, Lauren has mentioned, much has been done, but much still has to be done. I think twenty years of environmental loss, and yet as we as we uh, spoke today, there's still many other things that can be pushed on the national accounting side and on the anti, on the single use anti plastic side no i think for the mayor i mean with a with a bit of communication difficulties uh, with him on his on the island but i think he's a good example of someone who's just quietly done what he can in his particular area and then i think his his uh, it's his constituents who can see uh, and feel what he's been able to do Ilyak has gone from a very simple idea and has literally gone international and global. If there's anyone who thinks big, it's him. And uh, we wish him luck with his uh, uh, projects. No? And then for the MAP, we've always said that the Q&A is what highlights our general management meetings. And I think we've had quite a few uh, good questions and, and, and answers. And, and I think that's what we will, we will try to do to have an interaction among our members uh, to push interesting and provocative and uh, what has to be done ideas forward. So thank you very much, Rack, for uh, putting in your climate crisis committee. I know Cora Claudio somewhere uh, behind and, and she's done good help on, um, uh, on, on, on Talking to Senator Legarda on the national, um, uh, you know, accounting bill, etc. No, so thanks to you and to your team for another good uh, session. And as I mentioned in the early part of um, the meeting, it's more. A on an individual basis. So thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Gigi. And uh, thank you, panelists, once again. Thank you, members. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Stay safe and healthy. The MAP GMM um, is now adjourned. Thank you so much all for uh, joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for the uh, secretary for putting together this, uh, this uh, event today. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Congratulations to the new members. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye.